Yes, sir. Um, also, if this is, we're gonna run a meeting. Whenever you guys speak, can you turn your cameras on so we can see your faces? Uh, we'd love to see who's a asking us questions. Um, but yeah, man, I think this group of guys has been awesome. I think it's been a collective, like a collected idea. We wanted to honestly respond in a way. Uh, we know we're accountable not only to our teammates, to our families, but also to our, our communities and to the world at large with the platforms we hold. And so we, we kind of came together with a lot of people across the university. Um, and then the idea was to have, how can we gather people together ultimately to, to for something that's right, what's going on to stand for Black Lives Do Matter. Um, and in a way that unifies our entire community together uh, with the resources that we, we do have. So we came up with the, the name is the Clemson Community Peaceful Demonstration and a March for Change. And it's been awesome to see so many people uh, on staff uh, that work at the university, even in the community, the police department, uh, city officials, everybody that it's been awesome to see our community come together in the shadows. Hopefully it'll be a great event on Saturday as we come together as a community, and do something good. Hopefully it'll be a pivot moment as we join in on the fight that's going on in the world, which is like Black Lives Do Matter. We're fighting for inequality, fighting for equality. There we go. Pass it to Trev. Yes, I mean, we're, we're, we're kind of going to echo each other because we've really been working together and trying to come up with something that would be just impactful. You know, we really want to do it the right way. And I think it's important, like, we're not the first ones that have, you know, used our voice and that have tried to make a difference. Um, so that's like something that's important to us is to recognize kind of everyone that's come before us that's also made a difference. So that's the first thing. And then just on top of that, like Darian said, just really wanted to bring people together. You know, we don't want it to be something that's looked at to divide further. We want to bring everyone together. And we think that's that's what's going to happen on Saturday. And just really excited to get the whole community. It's not just football team or baseball or whatever, not just athletes. It's going to be open to the whole community, which will be which will be awesome. So just excited to be able to put it together with these guys. And we've been, you know, had constant communication with leadership on, you know, at the university and with the team. So it's been, you know, we've had full support, which has been really cool. Big Mike. Uh, yeah, so, you know, this whole thing kind of was just like, you know, I felt like, you know, my heart, you know, was really, you know, reaching for me to do something. And, you know, we guys, we all came together kind of like at the perfect time. And, you know, we, you know, we got to work and, you know, our whole staff is behind us. Obviously, you know, the community is behind us. And, uh, you know, I just felt like it was something we had to do. So yeah, it's just a great way to use our platform and and just basically get our message out that we want equality in um, everything that we do, uh, especially as a black community, and to stop police brutality is really is really sad to see some of the videos and hear some of the stories. But I feel like with this peaceful um, march that we're gonna have Saturday is really gonna bring the community together and and really do justice for us. Cornell, Cornell, take your headphones off. It's echo. All right, guys, we, we appreciate the insight there. Um, it, for those of you who are able, if you don't mind raising your hands, uh, using the, the raise hand function on Zoom, we're just going to we'll roll through the list as they pop up here. Um, don't know if it will allow video, um, but if you don't mind, as we go to you, if you don't mind introducing yourself and your outlet, uh, just so these guys know who's asking the questions, that'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, we're going to start with David Hale from ESPN.com. David, whenever you're ready, go ahead. Hey, thanks, guys. I uh, appreciate you doing this. i um, curious that any, any one of you can can answer, but what has the last couple of weeks been like as you've seen all the, uh, the, the unrest nationally? And, and certainly, I'm sure those conversations are being had within uh you know the smaller framework of the clemson community and your team what, what's it emotionally been like for you guys to see all of this to uh speak out on this and, and kind of have your voice heard as well i would just say uh as like a young black man it's been draining uh i can't remember like the last time i've, I've been this emotionally drained uh just because i feel like all your emotions are just, are just are just flooded with everything going on you look at your phone i feel like it's constant videos of things that are just show the, the evil in this world. Um, and I would just say at the same time, and it's, uh, I feel like our generation really is trying to push the ball forward and take it, take the step of our generation. I feel like every generation leading up to this point, we're just joining in on the fight. And I feel like it's going to look different for us to take a step. I feel like we're doing that. I think that's what we've done on our team, on our staff. And ultimately, like, that's what we want to continue to do in our community as we join the fight of so many people that have been trying to fight for equality in South Carolina. 
and at the world at large. Um, and we just seen people come together um, at the same time. People have shared their pain, their anger, which I think is a, there, needs, there needs to be a place for that because there, there is a reason to be angry, a reason to rage because there's been so much injustice done for so long. But at the same time, it's been cool to see a lot of my non-black friends or white friends come to the table and listen and actually for the first time believe. I think that's the biggest thing now is people are actually not just listening for the first time, but actually believing the stories that have or that show a different different side of America for black people. I think that's powerful. Um, and that's what we just hope to continue on. Like I feel like a lot of conversations have been happening in the shadows. I think we just want to continue on this as we try to bring our community together to do the same thing, to unite, but ultimately like to to share the stories and the hurt of so many people that are going on right now. Anybody can Mike, unless Mike, Trevor, or Cornell have anything to add. Uh, we'll go next to or Trevor, go ahead. No, you're good. You're good. All right, we'll I go. got some. I say some. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, personally, you know, I was kind of heartbroken at first because you know I feel like growing up, I've seen this over and over and over again. And uh, but to keep a long thing short, you know, right now I feel more hopeful than I've had in my entire life. You know, I've had tough conversations that you know I could have never seen myself having two months ago. You know what I'm saying? And I've had people reach out that you know I haven't talked to since middle school and high school. You know that you know. And that, like, to me, has shown me that, you know, the whole world curls right now, you know, it's bigger than, you know, me being a football player, you know, it's bigger than me being, you know, a student athlete. You know, these people care about who I am. You know what I'm saying? They care about my family. They care about, you know, our race. You know what I'm saying? And they want to see changes. So that's just been so hopeful to me. And I appreciate appreciate everybody coming together for this issue, man, because it means the world and we about to change the world. I would add on, Mike, Mike kind of sparked a thought for me. I think at first, just seeing everything that's going on and talking to some of my teammates, at first you you have something in your gut that's telling you like, you need to do something. And then the next step is like, you get kind of overwhelmed, like like what can I even do? And then it's it's been really, really, I mean, it has been exhausting, but also really cool to see how everyone's come together and, and that next step, like step three of this has been let's figure out what we want to do and, and the right way to go about it. And we've just all been united. There hasn't been any division as far as what we want to do. You know, even if we've had any disagreements, we've all just really gotten the same page. And it's, it's kind of amazing that we can get this many people on the same page to, to do something that'll bring everybody together. So that's, those are my two cents on it. All right, we'll go next to Matt Connolly from the state. Matt, if you're ready, go ahead. Hey, thank y'all for doing this. Uh, my question is for Cornell and Darian. Um, with you guys being seniors, I was just wondering what, what that senior meeting was like with Coach Sweeney, uh, what, what you guys kind of told him, what your message was to him, and what he shared with y'all, and what, what he had to tell y'all. I'll go first. So the, the, the meeting was basically about just him being able to listen to us and hearing our hearing our pain and hearing our frustration with what's been going on around the world you know the the black players on the team are are really hurting from everything that's been going on and he did a really great job of just listening and understanding and, and hearing us out and, and hearing our thoughts and then at the end he even gave some great feedback and um great discussion for us uh he gave us great opportunities that we have in the future coming up uh, a couple of things that we have growing up so yeah, I think it was really good for him for us to get our get our feelings out and come together as a group. And then we also decided on having a team meeting to do it. You know, it's only we only had 16 seniors there. So we felt like we needed to do it with the whole team. And once we did it with the whole team the other day, I really feel like we grew as a team and we moved forward. Yeah, I would I'm gonna second everything he said. And also just for the record, my boy Trev is actually a senior. He graduated in December. So shout out to my boy. Uh, so just for the record. Um, but yeah, I would just say like, just what Cornell said, man, um, it was probably my most impactful meeting over my four years at Clemson, just because I feel like it was so authentic and real. Um, I think everybody is hurting in some way. And I think every, we're all trying to figure out what we should do or how we should go about it. And I think a lot of people are confused. Some people don't know what to say or know what to do. A lot of us want to vent and for the first time, I feel like people actually want to listen to us. Like, uh, like Cornell just said, like Coach Winnie, uh, Miss Kathleen, they, they just want to listen and hear our hearts. Um, and I think it was just awesome just to see a group of guys from different places and different spaces and totally different backgrounds. Uh, there'd be a space for there to be grace for people that 
man, you can't really blame somebody for how they grew up. A lot of people, man, they have experiences like I have experiences myself, like they have been, have been exposed to things. And it was good for them to hear some pain, some anger, and some real stories that weren't fabricated or weren't made up. And for them to understand, like, this is some people live different, have different views of America uh, because of the color of their skin. And at the same time, to hear the support of guys who have like, become aware that they may have been ignorant because, like, if you're white, it doesn't really affect you. Uh, and it's easy not to care. But at the same time, it's, uh, if you care about your brothers, you care about humanity, and you have a heart, you do, you become compassionate about things that may not affect you, but you know that they, they actually do affect you because they affect your brother. So I think it was great. Um, and I appreciate Coach Sweeney for even hosting it at his house. Uh, it was just, it was awesome. Um, and I think it's going, it's going, these are, these are the moments that are kind of coming out to the light of moments like that in the shadows. So. We'll go next to David Hood of TigerNet. David, when you're ready, go ahead. Hey, uh, guys, first of all, just let me say, uh, from the human aspect of it, I'm proud of all four of you. As an older guy, uh, proud of proud of the stand that you guys are, are all taking. Now, from the sports writer part of it, Darian, this is your community college-wise, but this is also your community. This is where you grew up. You grew up right down the road. How important is this for you, you know, to not only foment change, you know, at your school, but, but seeing as how the, this is also going to impact the place where you grew up? and you know hopefully have a change on on you know where your home is man I'm, i know you could get emotional over a zoom call but your boy getting i don't know um but no i think that's like that was always a dream honestly to come uh come play here and then ultimately impact my community in a way that's positive and i think um for such a for such a time as this, that's the thing that keeps going on in my head. I feel like a lot of moments, a lot of relationships, a lot of decisions have been culminated from moments like this for me to, along with my brothers, to make some positive change. And it, it does me well because I mean my family's gonna come out, my friends I've grown up with that, and I feel like it really. We're from South Carolina, so let's not like I like <laughs> speak some history. Uh, we were the first to see from the from the, like the United States uh, when everything was going on back in the day, and it's there's a lot of deep rooted things here. I think it's it's been awesome through like Clemson, Clemson in general, but even just people that have been fighting for this, like to come together, because I feel like South Carolina really does need some change. Um, and I, it's been, my heart has been so overwhelmed to see it really happening. And for my generation to just carry the ball forward from all the people that have sacrificed up to this point, people that have fought for this, people that have made courageous decisions. And I feel like it's just our time to just do our part. Like Trevor was saying, just, we're just playing our part. Um, and like you said, it really, it really is special. Um, I feel like it's almost like God had a plan. Um, I think it's, it's going to come together. So hopefully we can just encourage people to, at the end of the day, when they leave on Saturday, it's like we're all in this together. We all got different roles to play. And we want people just to run in their lane because they got there's things that I can do that they can't do. There's things that they can do that I can't do. So that's the message. It's like, hey, how can we all come together ultimately to like to raise up people, to empower people, and ultimately to all of us to be to be equal. So thank you, David. You're the man. Going to take it now to Grace Rayner from The Athletic. Grace, when you're ready, go ahead. Hey, guys. Thanks for doing this. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen that Coach Sweeney has taken some, some pretty heavy criticism very publicly. And I'm just curious how, from the four of y'all's standpoint, he has handled this. Oh, I'll take it. Um, I feel like Coach Sweeney – Knowing him personally for going on five years now, he's been nothing short of amazing to me and my family since the day that they came to my house and recruited me. Uh, he's such a genuine, loving guy, and everything can be taken and misconstrued, but Coach Sweeney is really a genuinely loving player and person, and every player that he's ever coached can, can back that 100%. Um, and everything that's been going on, he's handled it perfectly to me. I feel like He's come out and uh, he's communicated with us, uh, the seniors having that conversation, that discussion, and then having the team meeting to address the situation and, and letting everyone get their feelings out and, and not trying to hide behind things. So, Yeah, and I would just uh, kind of back Cornell and to say, um, I think – I think everybody, as, I, as I've talked to older men, younger men, I think we're all in a position where we can all be educated and all learn how to better handle the situation. I think that's like everybody. I think everybody's on the same plan. So like this is a new territory for some people. And it's just like we're all trying to figure out, hey, what's the best way to go about it? I think the best thing he's done is like consult the seniors 
our staff. And as far as we're, we're trying to come together as a team and be unified, we don't want, we don't want to let anything divide us. And that's kind of the message for our community is like, this could be a moment to divide more people. We want to unify. I feel like Coach Williams tried to do that really well with our players, our staff, and ultimately just anybody uh, as we, as he's empowered us uh, through Paul journey and through other things for us to even have this event, have this thing on Saturday. Like he, that was him empowering us for years, like giving us his players a voice uh, and more of a voice so we can use it to, to make some change. Yeah, I would, uh, I would, oh, uh, I would just say uh, I completely agree, you know, with both of them. You know, Coach Sweeney has been an awesome dude ever since I met him. And uh, just one thing for me personally, it's good to know that, you know, he is trying to understand, you know, certain things that, you know, are different from me and him. You know what I'm saying? And um, I mean, like I said, they hit it all on the head, but just knowing that he wants to understand, you know, he identifies it needs to be changed. You know, and now he's like, how do we do the change? You know, that's what it speaks to me because you know, a lot of people can hear stuff, but, you know, to go do it, you know, is, is actually helping. I would say just basically Mike kind of said what I was thinking too, but he really is, he's shown an effort to learn. And I think um, similar to my situation, like I've had a lot to learn and it's been, it's been cool to learn from all these guys in here, but also the whole team. Uh, we had our, our meeting a few days ago and I learned a lot from them too. And I think with Coach Sweeney, it's um, for people that don't know him to the public eye, some things, it's easy to judge some things that he does, but for I think the biggest testament to who he is is the people that are around him every day, uh, his family, all of his teams that he's ever had. And just, I think the glowing views of what we, what, what we have on him and the person he is. And he's, he's proven that every day that we've been around him that, you know, he's genuine and we trust him and he's been behind us this whole time. And I think, you know, sometimes from the outside looking in, it's a little easier to judge some of the things he does because you don't really have that relationship with him. But, um, but we, we, we fully support him and, and he fully supports us. So. We'll go next to Eric Boynton of the Greenville News. Eric, when you're ready, go ahead. Yeah, I appreciate uh, you guys doing this today and really admire what you four are doing here. This is uh, for Trevor. Trevor, you came out fairly quickly on social media uh, and addressed uh, this uh, current situation when it really began to gain some steam. How it, just could you address a little bit how important you feel it is, not only as a, as a, you know, a quarterback with a, with a big you know, national platform, how important you felt it is not only in that regard to address this, and really get behind this and, and, and publicly lend your support, but also as a white student athlete to go ahead and, and really get out there and, and, uh, and, and show your support for this uh, current movement. I think just realizing, you know, my part in all this, um, which is, it's been, it's made it easier with guys like Darian, Mike and Cornell helping me too, but I think just realizing like I, I do have a part to play and that even though this these issues don't directly affect me it does it does affect me because this affects the world I'm living in I want my kids to one day live in a world where everyone is equal and they can have best friends that are that are black white you know whatever color and so that's that's been kind of my thoughts on it and then also um I think just like you said the platform I have it's important for us to stand up for something it's easy to stay quiet because you know some people don't want to make people mad but my thoughts on it are like you know those aren't the kind of fans followers whatever you want if if it makes them mad when you stand up for for equality so that's that's been my thoughts on it we'll go next to will vandervoort of the clemson insider will when you're ready go ahead yeah uh this is from mike uh mike just wanted you mentioned earlier about the conversations that you had with if some of your friends and, and 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 different white people that you've talked to through it all how do you think those conversations have gone? Do you think they have a better understanding of the struggles you guys have to go through on an everyday basis? Yes, 100%. Um, my main thing with my conversations is, you know, to let people know that, you know, although, you know, we see most of these things on TV, you know, it could be very real to us, you know, and like I've had situations happen in my family, you know, I have to tell them about personally my feels, you know, about my fears, you know, my struggles. And I feel like a lot of times it's just not really addressed, you know, with people you're close with. You know, you might, like you say, you see it on social media and you know what's wrong, but, you know, it'll hit you different, you know, if you know your best friend has been going through something, you just, it just never just been brought up. And so, 
I mean, the conversations, they've been, they've been hard at times, but I feel like hard, hard conversations is how you, you make change. You know, you got to bring attention to some things that just need to, even if you don't want to talk about them. We'll take it next to Larry Williams of Tiger Illustrated. Larry, when you're ready, go ahead. Guys, thank y'all for doing this. Um, it seems like by all accounts, uh, your coaches and, and fellow teammates have been enlightened um, by, by, by some of your testimony and, and are thinking of things in a different way by some of the, I guess, powerful stories. What, what's the most powerful and revealing, I guess, thing you've heard from, from Coach Sweeney during, during all these discussions and, and meetings and such? Um, just probably just, uh, I mean, he, he, I think he's understanding that, because I mean, he, he did like Coach Williams, like come from a hard background and he, like he came from legit nothing to become who he is. But at the same time, it's like um, being black and something that's like, it's not really a circumstantial. It, it's just like, you're just given this, you didn't get to choose it uh, per se. And I feel like for him just to, just to acknowledge the fact that even, even though you can come from, people can be like, come from a hard place. If you're black, it's still harder to get to where you want to go. Um, I think that's something he's realized through just having conversations. I feel like he's known that, but even, even still just seeing like, even in 2020, that's still a thing, it's still a reality. And so just hearing like, I mean, nah, not to put it any guy, but it's like, we, we've shed tears as a team. We've had funny moments, funny laughs, but I feel like all, all in all, it's just been for him just to just say he understands us and he supports that black lives do matter. Um, and just for him to, to rally behind us um, as he sees the leaders of his team that he's raised up go out into the world and try to make some change. Um, so that's, I would just say that's probably been because uh, everybody has stories, everybody's experiences, but I feel like it's just the support. Uh, and that's one thing he's, he's verbally told us over and over again, like, hey, man, you, you guys, I love you guys, support you guys. I see you guys. I understand. And I want to do whatever I can as far as educate myself or even whatever I can do resources to because I, I don't know if you know this, but we don't really have that much money, but we're getting to put up a pretty good event this weekend. Uh, so just the universe and everybody has supported us. And I think just the support. Anybody else can chime in and we can move on. All right, we'll go next to Adam Benson, I believe, the Charleston Post and Courier. Uh, Adam, when you're ready, go ahead. Hey, guys, I uh, really appreciate you doing this. Um, just wanted to ask you what you thought about the comments that uh, DeAndre Hopkins made on, on social media about why he doesn't say Clemson when he's introduced during games. And also, you're probably aware that there's a – a state representative here in Columbia that wants to see the Benjamin Tillman statue come down on the state house grounds. Wanted to have you, you know, we just wanted to see what you guys thought about both of those things in any order. Thanks again. Did you, I'm, I'm not uh, up to date on what Nuke or D hop said on the, about not mentioning Clemson, honestly, could you like kind of put that in perspective? I don't, I don't, I don't know what he said. Oh yeah. He said on Twitter, I think it was yesterday that, uh, he said on Twitter yesterday that um, he wants to see all references to John C. Calhoun removed from campus. And that's why, you know, he has trouble sort of saying Clemson when he's introduced um, before games, just because of his feelings about, you know, the, the John Calhoun's past, how it relates to Clemson's history. Gotcha. Um, all right. I'm, I'll start off and y'all boys support me. Um, <laughs> I would say also one thing he did tweet was just about how much Coach Sweeney and the university, well, just mainly the program, has supported him as a man, has come from Clemson and become who he is. And it's been cool to see him come back. He came back for the Coach Sweeney's reunion a couple couple weeks ago, whenever before Corona took over the world. Um, and my, I think he represents a lot of people that just want to see um, black people be a forethought, not an afterthought. And I think our university is trying to do that as much as possible in the days to come to to see us be like on the forefront, like, hey, how does this affect our black students, black players, which I think our president, even Coach Sweeney and our AD have done from an athletic standpoint, also university standpoint, just trying to move that ball forward. I feel like he's just trying to play his part. Like Trevor said, he has a huge platform. He's one of the best receivers, not the best receiver in the league. And he just wants to see his university uh, be the standard of what it looks like to support black people and black players. I think that's what he was trying to get across. And I think he, he he is more than ever before in his, his NFL career been way more supportive of Clemson as he's seen the change we're trying to make recently. Yeah, and I would just piggyback off Wrench. You know, he's not trying to say that he's trying to, you know, change history or whatever. He's just basically, I felt like he was saying, 
that being a black student at Clemson University and and having Clemson University still have a have a statue up or a college name after him, an honors college name after him, is is really not promoting change. And he wants to have that change promoted. And by doing that, I feel like you need to remove his name off of it. But you know, he has his own opinions and he has his own feelings. But that's that's how I took it. Yeah, and I would just say just to. Uh... Uh, and being in conversations with people at our university, I, I know that's like on a priority. Uh, and it's, it goes beyond uh, what people think. It's not just easy as saying like, hey, he should, the president or somebody should just remove it. It's a lot of things that go into it. But I know uh, as we've been in conversations with all people at university, even planning this event and planning change for it, we've known like we're, that's, that's a thing that's on the priority list of fighting for stuff like that. Uh, I think we, we are seeing like it's, uh, it's doable. And so hopefully in the days to come, we'll see more stuff like that happen. All right, we will go next to Brad Sinkoff of both WCCP and Clemson SI. Brad, when you're ready, go ahead. Hey, guys, uh, just big thanks to all four of you for doing this. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, for, for Cornell and for Darian and for Mike, to see like Trevor and, and, and some of your other white teammates come out and support you, like how important is that? Like, you know, we, we, we've seen so much of that. And I, I just want to know from you guys, from your guys standpoint, how that's affected you and, and what it means to be backed by Trevor and, and some of your other white teammates through this. Uh, personally, I mean, it means the world to me and literally the world. Like, you know, I feel like my whole life, you know, the things that's been happening is just like kind of just been a thing that's been happening with black people, you know, and, you know, it didn't really reach outside of that. But to see my teammates, you know, reach out, to have my coaches reach out, you know, I've had some real heart-to-heart -heart conversations with my coaches. And, you know, to see them really care for me, man, it, I mean, that just showed me, like, it's got to change because it's never been like this in my whole life. You know, it's never been like this in my parents' life, speaking with them about this. And, um, you know, I, I appreciate my guys and I appreciate, you know, even the whole community, people reaching out to me on Twitter and stuff. Know that that fills my heart and you know i'm so appreciative of everybody caring you know it shows me that you know we're more than just football players yeah it was it was big for me you know seeing them try wanting to be educated and, and wanting them wanting to understand you know my pain and my and my other teammates pain um and and having them use their platform and speak out it was really big it showed that you know, it's, it's more than football. It's, it's more than a, just a sport to them, and they really care about me and and uh, how I how my life is affected by all of this. So having them having them speak up and, and reach out. I know Hemp Green, a wide receiver here. He he texts me immediately and he sent me a thoughtful message, and it meant a lot. So it, it really meant a lot to me. And I would just uh, second everything they said. I think the talking to my grandparents and my parents, there is a difference um, right now. Um, and just like the world, I think people are seeing it. And it's, it obviously has been a black and white thing. That's how the, our, what the nation was founded, but it really has become the humanity versus inequality thing. I think you see in a lot of people come together, uh, mixed white, I mean, white, black, everything in between to fight for the rights of black people in America. Um, I, I think it's been awesome to see one people out in the public eye, like people that I don't know that I just follow, like, public people that are, are white people that have like supported the cause. But also, man, it's been dear to my heart to see, like like you said, my brothers that are close to me, I see every day. Uh, we spend more time with them than anybody else to support me and know like that I think everybody is more so than just listening. I think that's a bit, even before a lot of people didn't even listen or believe the stories, but I feel like they're, they're now listening, but more so they're believing. And even doing that, I feel like it's allowing them to, to show compassion in their heart because it's like, man, this is, it's true, it's real. And I think we're all trying to see what roles do we play? Like Trevor said, like everybody has a role uh, in this thing to move the ball forward and uh, help with all of us, especially, which is right now, black, help black lives matter more in America. We'll turn it next.